We on? Okay, planning board meeting. May 4th, 2017 is now open. First thing on our agenda, Bassett Knoll, lot releases. Step right up, state your name for the record. Lee Castagnetti, I represent the owner, uh, Random Investment Realty Trust. And we, had we do have tri-party agreement that you submitted. Yeah, just I, we, we, we just got this from, from the lender uh, yesterday. Um, I, I was hoping to be able to submit it to you a little bit uh, sooner. Um, and what they sent to me was a, a form of agreement that they had used um, on a different project in the town of Abington. So um, it was kind of rough form when they sent it to me. So I had to spend a few hours uh, reworking it so it was a, a, appropriate um, to, to our situation. Um, okay. So it took me a little bit longer to get it into your hands. But Now uh, we send these off to town council yes. for his approval. Which I expect, right. Maureen will send it off tomorrow morning. Uh, did you have any questions about the uh, bond amount? I know you had a meeting out there with SciTech. I mean, uh, I did. with uh, Nick did with uh, with Nitch with Nitch. Tim and Steve. Well, Tim, the last meeting was with Can Tim. You state your name for the record. Yeah. Nick Harris. And you are um, representing Raymond Real Realty Trust. Oh. The property. And you had a meeting with um, Tim um, from Nitch Engineering. Because I saw that they they adjusted their their figure. They adjusted they the uh, the amount of tonnage on the uh, top coat from 800 ton to 400 ton. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I, I couldn't. I said to them, I can't understand why this is 800 ton for the top coat, and you only have 600 somewhat ton for the two and a half inch binder. And it costs a lot more to do the binder. So I'll have to look into that. And I asked them a couple of other questions. One of them was the riprap is all in place, and he saw it in place, and he didn't remove it from the from the amount on the bond. And when I texted him, uh, I'm sorry, emailed him yesterday, I asked him, "Is there a reason that you didn't do that?" He said, "You need to take that up with the board." And I said, "Okay." And the other thing I asked him about was the cleaning of the uh, the drainage system. I said, "Tim, I, tell me what that means." How do I do that? How do I get, you know, well, what, we, what, we, what we, we require is before you even get final sign offs, you have to go in and make sure all the catch basins are all cleaned out. Catch basins, yes. Yep. Well, $28,000 is a lot of money for 10 catch basins. 29000 actually rounded up by $6. See, he, he told me that, he, I said, Am I supposed to clean the pipes? I mean, how do I clean 12-inch pipe? So I don't have any idea. I said, well, you got it on your bond estimate. He said, I don't know what it is. I said, well, okay. All right, so two things in question. Cleaning for 29000 and what was it? The rip rep. And the rip rep for 40000 and, and the rip rep at the time was at the site but not in place on the first visit. And subsequent to that, the riprap was actually in place. Those are really in. The third thing was the maintenance of the road for twenty-three thousand dollars. I mean, I can understand some maintenance of the road. I'm not here to. Um, no, I understand. It's a big. It's a big amount. So if there's anything that's that's uh, yeah between roadway maintenance and and uh, drainage cleanup, it's it's over fifty thousand dollars, and I, I just. You you know you you you're in the business. It's, that seems excessive. I don't know how you could what you could spend fifty thousand dollars on on fifteen hundred feet of road for those. All two. right. Well, what I'll do is I'll check Bob. I think uh, we have riprap for forty thousand, cleaning of the catch basins uh, twenty nine thousand, and maintenance for twenty three thousand. Maybe we can just check with Ed first, and then uh, now I saw the last we had Tim. Tim Parker, is it? Yeah, Tim, yeah, Tim, Tim Parker. Parker. I saw some correspondence. So he is he's the third man on the totem pole, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if we uh, have to talk with Steve or... I'll go through Steve and we'll see what he's sending. Yeah, he's the guy that... He's the, he's, 
And I know they said for, for, for miscellaneous stuff, Tim can go out because he's less money yeah. for the applicant. Yeah. And that's all well and good, but if we need answers for the our meetings, I think we should, I think Steve should give us, he's most right, I think he's the one that should give us some correspondence, especially if there's questions. And they reflect on the form that it's, it's prepared yeah, no, by I Kim and checked by Steve. Right. So he's, you know, he's. Yeah, no, he, he well, he's the overseer. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. Uh, it's his project, so. Right. He did indicate that he was going to go back to talk to Steve and, and address those issues that I. Can. All right. Well, this doesn't have the the agreement doesn't have an amount on it. It's no. going to it's going to get it's going to get submitted tomorrow to town council. Right. He'll review it. We will review these three items and then we will come up with a decision f before for the final amount. Then for the final amount the, uh, yeah. for our next meeting and then. Uh, will be all set. So will will uh, town council be authorized to discuss any questions or comments directly with me? Oh yeah, we'll, yeah, okay, yeah. If so just so we can expedite that process. Oh yeah, have no, to. you okay. can. Uh, more, like, you know, Maureen's going to be sending it to him tomorrow. Okay. You can uh, give him a, you know, give him a call, okay. give him your contact or whatever, and okay. if he has any questions. Yeah. Now, does he see? When they review to review those, do, does he usually call you for any for reviewing or for comments or? No. Okay. Well, I think this might be the first one he's looked at too. So. Yeah. I can't remember the last time we did one. All right. I know Mark Nantine used to. If he had questions, he'd call you. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if just so there's no delay, Maureen, yes. if uh, Attorney Pete Nick has questions. And emails you, mm -hmm. you can just forward them to Burke, sure. and that way they're. If it's okay. legal issues, yeah. that'd be great. I'll CC Burke. I stay out of it because that way there we get a number for the next meeting and yeah, and let's let's start let's start building so we can at least get some things done before. Winter, winter comes fast. We do have another item that I believe you're aware of. I am. I've discussed it with Nick. We have uh, uh, police chief and fire chief is looking to have Katie Road. Looking at the plans for Bassett Knoll, I noticed that one of the streets is named Katie Road and the plans for the new development. Since we already have a Katie Drive off of Orchard Street in Rainham, this would have the potential to cause dangerous confusion in emergency situations. Now, we have, uh, yes, definitely it should be changed. Mm -hmm. We have, it's going to cause multiple problems. And well, I said, the plan has been recorded. Yes. And I suggest that we notify, we send a letter, and if you want, I'll sign it. Send it to fire chief and police chief. This plan was recorded over a year ago, and I believe that we need to let them know when they receive plans for their review that they really have to, if nothing else, look at the street names or is there a way for us to check street names because like mr. fountain said earlier if we approve a plan and it gets recorded now every and then we're asked to change the name every time that a mortgage run is done it's going to be coming up with the original plan and it's got to have another so, you know, Burke knows better than I. You can explain that, but I think they they should know that it's not as easy as just changing it. It, it certainly is better to, to to handle it that way up up front. But we've we've done that. The Bridgewater subdivision we're in right now, they actually got approved as Road A and Road B, and that's the way the plan was recorded. We selected names after the fact. No, so, I understand. Yeah, but it's, not, you, it's not. You know, Brett, it's, Brett does it every day, yeah. so he's yeah. he's the closing guy, and you know he'll tell you what he has to do when he comes upon this. 
Now that the plan is correct, is recorded, how do you plan on correcting it? What are you going to do? Typically, in the past, like in Bridgewater, nothing. Just refer to them as what they're currently known as. Yes, Bob. Uh, when you transfer a deed, wouldn't you have a like another line item saying formerly known as Kitty Court? The new name formerly known if that becomes a problem. It's lot three on a plan that says it's Katie whatever, and uh, however uh, the street sign at the end says it's X Y Z, and uh, yeah, you can do that, but it's just so. And every every different attorney who works on it, and then the yeah. bank, so the people go to a bank, and the bank paperwork comes in that's got a different name, or the appraiser says it's this, but the records are, so it's a mess. When we when when a plan is when a plan submitted to for our review and it gets sent out to all the different departments, is there a way? Do we have a list of all the names? Yes. Because this is something that this is something that uh, we have a street list. Yep. Whose yeah. responsibility is it to check if there's a problem with a name? Usually it's the police and fire if they have if they have an issue. Well, it's the police and fire because it's well it's whoever's in charge of the 9/11 system. That's where this came right. up according to this. That is typically from my experience. It's the nine, it's whoever's who is whoever in, in that particular town is directly involved in the 9/11 system. They're the ones who make that determination typically. In my capacity as a building commissioner, I'm the one who designates uh, street address numbers. I just I'll take this on now moving forward now that I'm going to be reviewing plans for the planning board I'll double check and make sure this this doesn't happen again <coughs> as long as you know I'm doing both roles yeah. all right well that makes that makes sense but do but you know what you're going to rename the street not presently we just found out so yeah well I suggest we'll we'll certainly act on it quickly but I, yeah I with that, that being not. said and Bob's going to be taking care of that if you can make sure you and, and by the way we can certainly um, put a plan on record well, to either, show the, either show the name change. Or, or, you know, just a single that, sheet layout you we know, can, an affidavit that yeah. it's changed referencing back to the plan yeah. but will you talk to me about it yeah. and we'll yeah do something yeah. that's certainly easy enough no so Bob's gonna take care of that so Maureen you don't you can cancel that letter to the well, chiefs we're not gonna for them you still to want them to yeah. no I all right all right let them send the letter and I'll sign yeah, it. Yeah, they're still going to get the plans to review. Yeah, they're going to get the plans to review too. Just so it just it just causes more confusion confusion a year after the plan's been recorded. Would you call this a minor modification? Really minor. <laughs> do you do you do you go to the registry with the minor modification and record it? Well, we we got to record something, uh, you know, some kind of affidavit that the name has been changed and and you know refers back to the plan and so on it's just so it's just so it's, it's on record it's just yeah. extra work just so it's on record if and they make note on the plan so officially you know, so yeah, yeah probably it would be listed as a modif a modification only because that's what's going to show yeah. um, all right well that's uh, that's good so that's going to get changed you're going to make sure you come up with the name and get with uh, with Bob, so yeah, make that sure gets it's, done. It's clear. And, yep. And what else? Do you have anything else? No. I, I do. do we? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. I met with Lee um, previous to the last meeting. We went over all the, um, well, some of the major points in the certificates of actions that were issued for this back in 2015. Uh, the board had asked me to look into the phasing, special permit for phasing. Yeah. Um, there was no um, designated phase one, phase two, phase three, only a reference that they could have up to 20 permits a year. So they could build out 20, 20 lots per year. Uh, Lee had uh, told me that they were gonna try to do this in three phases, correct? Yes. And yes. phase two and phase three would be 25 lots after this first 20, but they would you know, push it, push it out to a year and a half or two years, so it's not gonna get all built out all at once. So there's no specific number and no designated lots for phasing on the certificate of action. Other than that, we went through all a bunch of monetary things that were required for uh, lot releases, both in phase one and a few in phase two. And I think we're on the same page on all, all those yeah. um, conditions on the certificates of action. Okay. I got to interject, and I don't know if you recall, but 
my the letter I had submitted uh, at the last meeting um, noticing that we had opted to do the one sidewalk yes um, also included the request um, for the recognition in the, of the three phases the way we're going to be right, closing right. on them 20 25 right. well, exa exactly <laughs> and um, as Bob has said and I it pretty much scoured the uh, decisions um, it just it's the only place in the decision that it refers to three phases actually it, it, every, and, and it was only relating to the fact that the affordable lots were being done in three, three phases, phases right um, so it didn't actually connect them to any particular takedown of lots and that's why I just asked if we had a limit of 20 per could, lot of 20 20 lots per yeah. year then that's how I'm sure that's how we probably yeah. that was our determination how yeah. it was going to be phased you're only getting 20 so you got yeah. you know um, 60 lots or 75 lots or whatever so that's probably how we came up with it 70 yeah Okay. Also, conservation is, is um, all set with the release of these first 20 lots. Oh, good. How about sewer? We all up and... We're on, we're on a um, schedule for that. The uh, foundation went the other day. They're framing it up next week. Um, I met with the uh, sewer superintendent and Rob and, and Ryan. Uh, they've been on a pretty much a daily basis. Um, pumps have been ordered. Paid for almost in full. As um, soon as they arrive, we're going to be installing those. We're about two months away from finishing that. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I guess anything I else? Ask you a question on the side. Of Curtis. Yep. I, I, oh, on the away from this. Oh, it has well, something to do with you. Something to do with me. Uh -huh. This is plan of wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If it's uh, if you want to know where I go for my tan, <laughs> you'll have to call Maureen and leave a message. I definitely want to know. She will. Uh, uh, she'll I'm take. Like you, but she'll take the message and she'll relay it to me if it's. Okay, I'll do that tomorrow morning. All right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Nice to see you yeah. a lot. Good night. Thank you. And we have public hearing and zoning amendment marijuana not medical pr medically prescribed. Everybody's here for the marijuana. All right. Uh, yes, Bob. Oh, this is mine. This is yours. Go oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, clerk. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it is a public with the Provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 5. The Rain and Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 4th, 2017, at 6:05 p.m. at Rainham Veterans Memorial Town Hall, 558 South Main Street, to consider the following amendments to the Town of Rainham zoning bylaws. Yeah, Amend nice. Article 6 regulations by adding the following. Section 6.13, marijuana not medically prescribed. Consistent with Mass General Laws, Chapter 94G, Section 3A2, all, all types of marijuana establishments as defined in Mass General Laws, Chapter 94G, Section 1J, to include all marijuana cultivators, marijuana testing facilities, marijuana product manufacturers, marijuana retailers, or any other types of licensed marijuana related businesses shall be prohibited within the town of Rainham or take any action relative thereto. Any persons wishing to be heard or interested in the proposed amendments should appear at the time and place designated. A complete copy of the zoning bylaws and proposed amendments may be viewed at Rainham Town Clerk's Office, 558 South Main Street, during regular office hours. Rainham Planning Board, Daniel J. Andre, Chairman. Thank you. Okay. So, I guess short and sweet version this the voters of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts voted in legalization of marijuana last year and um, <coughs> I believe through the selectmen they've decided to take this route along with some other towns uh, not to allow or legalize or have any place in town where zoning allows any types of marijuana use sales or, or growing of marijuana. 
So this is just a, a way of uh, protecting the town from those types of establishments. I All right, now, oh, I'm sorry, John. And I, I looked it up this afternoon. In fact, so the state approved it. The town did not approve it. It was defeated in the town in the uh, November 8th election. Question four, I believe. It was. Now, when John, I believe, was our town planner, he came and said that we had to come up with a zone for that we had to create based on what this from the, the state was man, mandating what each town has to have a zone we had meetings on it we had um, I think a couple of meetings on it and it where do we put it and then we finally decided on from the lights at Church Street to the bridge Middleborough Lakeville line there that is the designated area so now does that area that's for medical so this has nothing to do with I don't believe this includes medical no because then it says right in it well it's it marijuana not, not medically right. prescribed okay I think medically prescribed apparently so that over you there have to, you have is, to have it somewhere in town okay. like adult entertainment you have to have it so just so that just so the town. public knows we could still have a facility in Rainham, but it could be medical purposes only. Just a no, medical. Okay. I'm not sure what the attorney general does with this when he gets it. You know, if a town can legally strive it, where the where the you know the Commonwealth allows it. So it's well, do you have it with package stores. Yeah. Well, well, I was just going to say. Um, it's not many towns, but there are. No, but uh, uh, it. my brother-in-law's sister's uh, chief of police in a town and I was talking to her the other day and she said what kind of happened was a long time ago when the prohibition ended and they allowed alcohol it wasn't allowed anywhere and if a town wanted to have it then they had to go through the motions of getting it approved so you could have packet stores and alcohol in town when they passed the marijuana one they said it's approved everywhere and if you don't want it now you have to go through the process of getting it. There's a it. number of cities and right. towns who have already passed this. Yeah, this, yeah you hear it on the news. This yeah. starting to. She right? mentioned. Uh, she mentioned a couple towns that were going through it. What's going to happen? You know, is there a possibility that somewhere mm. somebody's going to say, "Oh, you have to designate an area for well, it"? I think That's there's already. I seen. think you know we have a supposedly a facility going in Taunton, which is a pretty large facility. Um, Bridgewater, you know, I, I think there's going to be. But they included everybody, and you have to opt out. Mm. Yeah. That's the opposite. All right. Yeah. Well, is anybody here to speak uh, in favor, opposed? Nobody's here for the public discussion, so. So it'll be recommended to go to the town meeting warrant. All in favor to recommend it? Aye. 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 Okay. Next. O'Reilly Auto Parts, continued public hearing. This was read into record at our last meeting, and it was continued because the town engineer had, did not have uh, time to review and give us his opinions, comments. So, if you could state your name for the record. Yep. Um, you can slide that. Maureen will uh, scoot over a little bit. Play a little bit. Our camera, Wayne, the camera guy, is. will zoom in on that. All right, right there. That's good. Very good. So hello, I'm Josh Swirling, professional engineer with Bowler Engineering, and uh, with me tonight is Lauren Siros with Phase Zero Design, the architect. We um, prepared the site civil engineering documents uh, in the application on behalf of O'Reilly Auto Parts, who is seeking to redevelop the um, former buyer ride sales and service facility across from the Walmart on Broadway. Um, that's what it looks like today. 
There's a lot of impervious out there. Um, Excuse me, that's what it looks like today? How, with, how today is that? Well, it, is it without, still in, without the cars there. Uh, yeah, so it's not, O'Reilly's it's closed. not used, it's closed. Right, O'Reilly has closed on the property, so there's no, okay. there's no tenant there right, right now. Um, so yeah, the, the cars aren't there. I just drove back there today. There's still things that need to be cleaned up from former tenant. Um, and uh, certainly that will be done as a part of any redevelopment here. Um, so that building's getting demolished? Building's getting demolished. It's about five or 6,000 square feet. There's a little outbuilding out there as well. Um, there's, an air, there's wetlands around us. There's uh, an endangered species line that kind of comes through the property here that'll become a relevant in a little bit uh, as I describe the project. So this is what we're proposing. A 7,500 square foot O'Reilly Auto Parts. Uh, they are a very active in their development plans in this region. We're doing a lot of work with them up and down the East Coast right now. Um, so if you're not familiar with them, I'll give you a, a five second rundown on who O'Reilly is because they're, they're not that prevalent in this market yet. But I assure you, <laughs> they have plans to be very soon. Uh, Lauren's also doing a lot of work with them, not only in this market, but um, down in Pennsylvania and New York, New York as well. Maine. So there's uh, currently 4,600 plus or minus stores. They're a Fortune 400 company. Uh, so nice tenant to, nice neighbor to have here in town. Uh, aggressively developing. They're opening about 200 stores a year. Um, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of that work for them up and down the East Coast. Um, but they're, they're nationwide. They're in, f I believe, 43 states um, in America. And I don't think they've gone beyond America yet. No, not yet. That's so. why you lost that. Yep. So uh, the lot's about an acre and a half. Um, we're reducing impervious here by about 16,000 square feet. So significant reduction in impervious. The, that area that I had mentioned to the rear, the endangered species area, we don't want to touch because we just don't want to get involved in that level of permitting uh, and review. The water? The water supply area? We're in the Aquifer Protection District. We have the special permit in with Zoning Board. That's in one week. Uh, in CONCOM is the week after that. Um, we did receive, you folks saw the letter from, from your peer review engineer, niche engineering. I think overall that was pretty favorable. Um, I'll just orient you on the site and then we can get into yep. some more of those details. So currently there's two driveways. We're consolidating those to one. This driveway needs to be wide enough to accommodate our tractor trailers that'll be delivering to the delivery door back here. Um, we have parking that'll probably primarily be used for employees in the ancillary areas, kind of far away from the front door that's located here customer convenient parking along the perimeter there. We have 37 spaces, 44 are required by zoning. That's one of the waivers that we're, we're seeking from this board. O'Reilly doesn't need much more than say, you know, 35 spaces. We've done some stores with even less than that and it works for them. It's, it's a pretty benign use in terms of traffic generation. Um, it's an auto parts store, so you know you, it's not uh, a specialty retail or a restaurant or anything like that. It's it's a pretty benign use going in here, but it's well maintained. It's um, certainly how much do you have um, walk-in customers and how much is delivery drivers? So um, it varies by location, pretty significantly. I mean, it, once once it. Once a store is open, they're working on building that network with um, with auto repair places around the area, with dealerships in the area, um, and it really depends on how many um, of those accounts they're able to get and how frequently those folks are coming to pick up parts. Um, so that that's the best answer I can sure. give you. I think there's there's a strong walk-in retail component for sure. I mean that's kind of the baseline for them putting in. Uh, a store somewhere, but they do go after those corporate accounts pretty aggressively once once they're in. Um, 
and in terms of delivery vehicles, it's uh, they, they deliver about five times a week uh, to their stores. It was, was your I, question? I meant uh, delivery vehicles uh, pulling out to go to those corporate accounts. Um, Right, so that's where the variable sets in, and it, okay. you know, some I think some stores have a a truck, and some stores have several. So it really varies by how quickly they're able to. And the parts are coming them. into the location. Yep. How big a truck, and how many times a week? So they own their own trucks, um, and they they would like to use a WB67 everywhere, but they are able, you know, they have a fleet of vehicles. So if there's a site that's very difficult to get to an urban location or someplace where you know they need a smaller vehicle they have those vehicles the drivers are O'Reilly employees um, it, it's it's a good solid operation they just built a several hundred hundred thousand square foot distribution center in Devon's mass so they're you know they're trying to feed feed new stores in and around Massachusetts pretty quickly um, because they don't want parts sitting on a new distribution center shelf somewhere. Uh, they want to sell those parts. So. Now, is this the first O'Reilly? Where's, where's there another one? So I don't know if. There's one in Brockton. Brockton? Is there one in Brockton? Was Brockton that, was that a, f a That was probably a fit out, if I were to guess. Not it's a prototype. I don't think it's a fit out. There's one in Hanover that's a fit out. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know how you know how local. We just did one in Milford um, last year. I don't know if that's open yet, um, but we we've probably permitted roughly ten so far um, in and around Massachusetts. In and around, we we've done several down in Connecticut, a couple in Rhode Island, okay. a few up in New Hampshire. Do you do a standard design, or is it based on? population in the area and the configuration of the lot or is it all cookie cutter like it's Donald yeah. dumps everything exactly the same yes. yeah well before you before you get into your design phase can we just like we just Sorry. finish no nope. no no problem <laughs> and you don't have to apologize I just like to finish up if you wanted to go through you said you reviewed uh, the letter from niche yeah and I thought that a lot of that was very favorable where they're you know suggesting that they're okay with the waivers that we're seeking uh, obviously obviously it's the discretion of the board but at least hearing that there there's no objections to those we, we felt it was a very favorable letter and the areas with that they're looking for us to make some concessions if you will are suggesting that because we're seeking so many waivers on you know interior landscaping for example or or what have you that we add a little more right now we have about 95 plantings um, and to help justify you know to give the board justification for granting those waivers adding some additional landscaping which we're happy to do um, the other uh, items that were kind of notable in there um, let's see here I think honestly that was the most significant item that I came across in their letter was add some more landscaping there was some um, housekeeping items that they asked us to clean up on the plans which are pretty easy and justifications for the wider driveway that we have which would include providing some truck turning templates to show why well, we need what I what I'd like to do is if I'd like to go through the waivers sure because if there's other things that you have to uh, clean up on the plan at least if we go through the waivers you know whether if the board doesn't have an issue with them you'll know if we do sure. then we'll know so when you come back where you know you should be uh, ready to go when you have your final that sounds adjustments on the next hearing very good all set mm -hmm. okay with that everybody we can go through the waivers if i read them out if there's not a problem they won't uh, say anything and if there is just raise your hand and we'll stop uh, first waiver development impact statement Section 4.15, Section 4.22 uh, states traffic impact study is required. The applicant is asking for a waiver. Uh, well, I'd like to at least 
have them give us a figure for what they think their hourly, daily count will be. We, we provided that in the original application. Oh, okay. We're just not looking to do much beyond that because it's such a low traffic generating. That's what I would think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it says the applicant provided a memo of the proposed traffic impact of the project. The traffic appears, impact appears in line with the expected use and does not appear to affect Route 138 in a negative. Uh, section 5.1.5 states 5% of interior of parking lot must be landscaped. Um, the applicant has provided plantings around most of the building, but not within the parking lot. Niche engineer recommends the applicant consider additional planting plantings east of the illustration basin as mitigation for granting the waiver. Now, east is going so, that direction. Where would he be suggesting to put some more plantings? So where we would like not to go is beyond that natural yeah, heritage no reason, line. There's no need for us to go all the way back But there. there's plenty of room for us to add, you know, some additional landscaping within this green area that you're seeing that's right now planned as, you know, basically seed. So we, we can add landscaping within the limits of development now what's, that we're showing. That's all green. So what do you, what's your plans for the green? That's all grass. That's there's grass. areas where we're doing, you know, some sod so that it's nice during at store opening, basically right around the perimeter of the parking, and else, elsewhere it would be uh, hydro seed. Um, you know, I don't want to just plant trees just because we're giving them a waiver of, a, of an island planting. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean? To put them behind a building, you're so far back, it's crazy. And I, don't think, I mean, you can't see any residents from back there. To have, uh, you know, f f for what it is, it's not like it's a 100-lot uh, car lot where you're going to be, you know, with the cars. Yeah, and just goes right into a swamp behind the building. Where do you have, where do you have plantings? Up front. We, I mean, again, there's, it's not like we're doing nothing. There's 95 plantings proposed. Um, and I, I mean, yeah. just on the, if you folks are okay with that, O'Reilly would prefer to only be maintaining things. Yeah, no, it's, you know. it's. Plantings are low. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a landscape plan? Yes. Yep. Well, well, if, if just, why don't you put that up? Yeah, I don't want to, I don't well, want to do that. I agree, but. If they ought to be putting in 30 or 40 trees, maybe they could put them in at one of our parks. I'm sure they'd be happy to do that for us. I think we provided the required number. It was just that we weren't doing the island. They're asking for the number. island. Or the, you know, the waiver is for the. Uh, most of the building, 5% uh, of the interior of the parking must be landscaped. I'll put it up, but I'll do a quick swing by it too, just so you can see. Yeah, so you have them all along the, all along the street. You have larger ones on the side. Yeah. Just as long as they're not big enough to obscure the view of one. Thing yeah, because they look like they're all... Come out of there the wrong time, boy. Mm -hmm. And we usually put the shifter load on the landscape and all these paintings. Heights of planting so that it doesn't in the future obscure site. In the fine print in our bylaw, we, we have the right to go cut them all down anyway if they obstruct. So <laughs> uh, I'm not going to send them to a local park to plant some trees. So actually, if you, Burke does that. If you want to make that motion, Burke. <laughs> no, the rest of the wife just. I'm. Uh, I'm. I don't need additional plantings just to plant them. I agree. Okay. So great. Thank you. Um, Section 5.4, parking lot loading, states that the parking shall be prohibited between the building and street layout except for handicapped parking. Okay. Uh, you have parking. What, what do you uh, propose to keep the people from driving into your building or killing somebody on the sidewalk? Do you have bollards? Do you have... Yeah, so there's there's bollards where there's storefront 
glass there. Okay, so you do have bullets. Yeah. There was a sidewalk there as well? I don't know if you see the Is there one there? In front there of the there's separation between the face of the parking stalls, a walkway building. for the employees, and then there's even shrubs on this one. And it's amazing that people, uh, when we ask for bollards or car bumpers and we tell them that, you know, somebody could actually drive over and kill somebody, you know, three people just got killed in an auto auction. Gotcha. Indoors. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it happens. I mean, you know, Boston, uh, not Boston Chicken, the Chipotle, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning, a car goes through the side of the building. So these things do happen, and uh, all right. So you do have bollards. Mm -hmm. Well, the, is the whole front of the building glass? No, no. That's one of the later waivers too, which Lauren would be happy to show you. Okay. So yeah, you can. We're, while we're doing the waivers, you can show us that. That's. Uh, so the bollards would be just in front of the storefront, right there. Bollards be how many feet? Apart. No, there's about eight to nine of them typically. Uh, roughly five to six feet. Okay. As long as you can't drive a car between them. Right. Okay. So, can you show me the walkway that's in front of the building? Yep. You said there's only... Oh, I'm going to come up. Yeah, closer. There's five feet in front of the spaces here. Right there. So you have parking spaces. They like to use wheel stops too. Okay, so you are going to put wheel stops on all of them. Yep. And okay. then there's bollards. Then there's bollards in front of the, front of the ones where there's storefront glass. You can see the bollards in this area. All the way through over here. And how wide is this? This is ADA compliant. No. This is 20 feet, and then we have five feet of walkway. And then you have some shrubbery too. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. Um, section 5.7.2 states that the width of the access connection at the property line shall not exceed 25 feet. The applicant is proposing a 38 foot wide opening. And that's, you mentioned, for your larger trucks to make deliveries. I, I'd be surprised if you guys don't get this one all the time. Well, we're, we're, uh, we don't mind the 38 feet. Our yeah. fire department's been having issues with narrower entrances, and our fire equipment is getting bigger and bigger, apparently. Sure. So. I don't think anybody has issues with. And I mean, we need winding. to design the radii that get to the property line based on DOT's geometric requirements, which sets that width. You, you know. know. Now, with that said, Bob, you know, I, I know we talked about this before, and if we should look at changing our regs, you know, we only require 24 feet on our openings, and it came up a couple of times. Uh, instead of a waiver, it, it, and we know it's an issue, the fire department brought it up to our attention. It's almost something that we should look at. Oh, I agree. Change it, especially if, if if it's 38 feet for uh, DOT. If if that's what you need to meet their requirements, I almost think that that's what we should adopt. Well, I, I think so too. I mean, we've talked about Mill Street. I, I oh, that's, an, that's another one. I mean, I was going to work one day, and I had a couple minutes, and I just drove in and out a couple times. It's mm -hmm. tight with my little car. And it's not like they don't have the room to make it wider. They have plenty of room. Yeah, there's yeah. tons of room. So I always think instead of it, you know, being a waiver, I think we should look at adopting. Well, this one's going to be a waiver. Until we no, I know, no, but I'm just. It's the only time that I, you know, that they come up is uh, for us to make changes is when we when and we have an applicant in front of us. As you guys think about that, the um, that distance is. A variable because it's tied to how far the property line is from the edge of the travel way right if and, and not all sites are the same so I don't know right. that you can set an exact number well I w we're our stand is 24 right now even if we go to 28 or sure, something something <coughs> that majority you know maybe 50% 60% of our applicants 
plans coming in front of us it works for right uh, we've talked about it in the past and it just seems to keep coming up so I think it's something we should Absolutely. we should definitely put on the books to get done so in, in terms of responses we're gonna do a response letter back to or that's our intention yep. um, can we simply indicate that the Planning Board has accepted the waiver or will that be communicated to them otherwise yeah no we'll uh, you can you can let them know but okay they don't uh, we're not gonna vote on the waivers tonight we're just I'm gonna read through them just so you can you're get, gonna get leave feedback yeah you get your feedback so you can come with a final plan okay uh, and you can let them know that the boards at you know didn't have an issue with it good and if he has questions he'll he'll notify Maureen and great or uh, Bob um, where was I? D? G. L. No, no, F. 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 Hold on. Bob's pushing me all the way to the bottom of the page there. Good. Okay, section 5.7.3 states that, states that access connections shall provide a minimum distance of 40 feet in depth between the property line, and that's where you just brought up uh, that you don't have uh, Nick Engineer and recommends granting this waiver. Request that the board's discretion as provided. So what do you have? If you From don't have property a property line to, um, let's see here. 12 feet. Currently, there's 4.9 in the existing condition. Section 5.9.6 states the parking area should be placed on the side or rear of the building. Uh, Niche Engineer notes that placing the building close to Route 138 will require a variance from the front setback requirements. Does not have a problem with that waiver. I don't remember why. We decided that it wasn't a good idea to park vehicles in front of the building. Everybody wants to put the parking lot in front and not put the building out by the street. So yeah. we get asked this all the time. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't think of any, any building along the 138 that doesn't have the parking spaces in front of the building. The only means the, the other uh, auto parts store, they're all yeah. in front of the building. Oh, it doesn't. What are we gonna do? Run, you know, go around behind or side of the building? Well, you got like Harry's Lithosomia. There's a, I forget the name of the doctor who's just about next to that, and they're on the side. They're not yeah, in Harry's front. Harry's in front of it. Huh? But so you know, there are some. But I don't know <coughs> why do we have a rule that we want it in the back or the side when everybody comes in and wants it in the front. We say okay. Yes, Bob. <clears throat> Just keep the, keep in mind that there's a uniqueness to this particular parcel of land where they're trying to stay away from the wetlands and they're trying to stay away from the natural heritage line. They're trying to do everything up front of the on the mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. They're in that they're in zone two, so they have some challenges. And I think some of these waivers are reflected because of the, the problem yeah. they're trying to develop or redevelop. Okay, so. Um Section 5.97 states a flat roof and A-frame roofs should be avoided. A flat roof is proposed for the building, which looks fine. Section 5.9.9 .9 states that a minimum of 60% of the building's street side facade shall contain windows. The windows should be divided by muttons and framed with a cased casing trim. Awnings should be designed. Um, does not take ex does not take except to granting this waiver. So your building you have obviously you don't have sixty percent, but you have more warehouse than you do showroom storefront because of what it is. Yep, it's a pot store. Right. If we don't want any more windows on it, they'd just be blacked out. Mm. You wouldn't be able to see through them. Yep. They put shelving right up against it. How high is the total building? Uh, 86 feet, 86 by 83. So I have 40 feet, almost 40 feet of Yeah, so it's almost half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Section 9.2, under the ZBA requirements for the issuance of a special permit, requires hydro, hydrologic study. Uh, Nichendera recommends granting the waiver. Somebody explain that to me, please. We'll let the we'll <laughs> do the expert. I'll try. Tell me. <laughs> we'll let the Tell uh, me. so um, and I don't know that there's a very clearly defined um, one size fits all definition to a hydrogeologic study, but typically it would be performed by a geotech or environmental consultant that discusses. Um, you know, a lot. There's a lot of testing done to determine soil transmissivity I was and say, where they're, they're testing groundwater the soil is flowing. Because typically, a, a place like that, a garage and so forth, long before there were regulations, people were dumping stuff out in the backyard. So O'Reilly does their environmental assessments of all locations. Given the use here, you know, they start with a phase one environmental assessment, <coughs> and then knowing the prior use here, they would go into a phase two where they do exploration and soil testing. So they have all that information to know what's required, but a hydrogeologic study typically talks about which way groundwater is flowing and mm -hmm. gets into a lot of things that isn't typically done for a use like this, particularly where we're removing a service use. Right now there's, you know, the, the prior use here had both sales and auto service. Right. We're cleaning that up. We're getting rid of any service aspect to the building. You know, we're getting, there's not going to be any outdoor storage of tires here. There's not going to be any outdoor storage of, you know, of old cars that are rusting and falling apart. That's all, go that's all going away. So in my mind, this is a great improvement from yeah. an environmental it standpoint to that site. Go ahead, Brooke. I presume you're going to have signs of no changing water allowed in the parking lot. They don't usually sign it, but I, it's, you know, there's, there's people there managing the store that would stop somebody from, from doing that. Are you going to be ripping out all of the um, blacktop that's there now? Yes, to the blacktop. So you're starting fresh pretty much. Yes, but as I mentioned, there's a gravel area that extends way out back that we're not going to pull up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just in general comments, the applicant should confirm that all utilities for the new building will connect to the existing utilities at the site property line mm -hmm. with Route 138 and that no utility work is proposed within Route 138. Yeah, I mean, we'll need to do a little more digging to confirm we don't need to upsize the, the water. The applicant should confirm with the board that the plans address any concerns from the police and fire department, including requirements for hydrant locations. <coughs> We're not sprinkled. Yeah, at this location. So I mean, I don't, I don't know if I need to go and reach out to anybody on that, or if. How big is the square footage? Just under seventy-five. No, I don't think you're. They're not gonna. They can't even re enforce it. So and I'm you sure you, you've done enough of the buildings that you know you're gonna keep them just under seventy-five hundred square feet, so you don't <laughs> have to sprinklerize. I mean, that's. So, I'm sure you. Uh, what do they say? This isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> Niche Engineer recommends that a snow storage plan be provided for a review of the board. Where are you planning on storing all your snow? Along the perimeter, and when that's exceeded, you know, they'll have to haul it off site. Uh, okay, where you don't have, we're not requiring you putting up trees or anything in the back. Yep. And we are not, uh, I know you're in a, a zone two overlay district. I'm not sure if the water department will have any input on where they would like the snow to be stored. CONCOM will. Well, CONCOM will, but the North Radium Water District is going to have just as much, right. just as much to That's say. The personal water supply comes especially from. If it's, okay. Especially if it's treated, if the snow mm -hmm. is, you have sand, salt, mm -hmm chemicals uh, so I'm gonna leave that I think you should before the plans approved we should know we need to know where the snow is going to be stored only because again between Concom and North Rainham Water District I'm more concerned with North Rainham Water District sure. mm. with the overlay district um, they do generally require it to be known uh, not just the dump snow all around. If they don't have issues with it, um, 
then I guess we're not going to have issues with it. We'll let you just whatever the whatever the conservation does. Yep. But I know in the winter time, believe it or not, the levels salt levels in the water just from the regular streets goes up. It goes yeah. up. Um, you know they have different treatments that they have to do in the winter time. Arthur Bendinelli is the superintendent for the North Rim Water District. What was the name? Yeah. Arthur Bendinelli. I can give you his phone number if you'd like. I'm surprised. I would think you would have had already filed with. Uh, yeah, R Randy in my office may have. Yeah, because you would have. You would, you'll have to. I believe when they do the ZBA special permit process. The oh, that's when it triggers it. It's in automatic. They say at that point at that meeting, at that hearing. And when's the ZBA? Next week. All right. So you might. We'll hear more. On yeah. That. But yeah, we'll take. My phone number. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the office is 508. 824-0520. I won't give you his mobile. It's fun. <laughs> it's up to him to give you that. Last one and then. Uh, so that one there you should check on. Niche Engineer recommends that the applicant update the board on any other meetings. Correspondence time we did that. So before we totally leave snow storage, knowing that we have, you know, the perimeter we're using for a lot of, uh, we have a bioretention area, we have a swale. We're kind of using it for drainage, and the CONCOM isn't going to want snow storage to go into those drainage improvements. It's all, you know, LID type uh, improvements. Uh, we're at, we, we'd probably want to show a couple of spaces being used for snow storage. We're already under the required number of parking spaces, but again, we have a couple to spare in terms of what O'Reilly, you know, quote unquote. Needs. Well, again, that's. Uh, that's why we have a permitting process. I guess it's gonna when you go to the next level, when you go to Concom, it, let let's see what they say. Sure. And then what North Rainham, what you know, what they're gonna say. I don't think it's up to us to tell you we're gonna give you waivers on park and just put snow storage. Uh, if another department is requiring it and we see that it's gonna you know it's gonna work fine, okay. giving you a waiver. So we do have. You know, we're basically accommodating for snow, so it, we're helping with dothranium water, then, you know, something we'll look at. But okay. we're not just going to throw it out there and say we'll give you, you know, five spots for I, you to put snow. Yeah. See what happens over your next, That's fine. Your next couple of meetings. Just, I'm thinking ahead to yep. what their comments are going to be and seeing if there's even an appetite with this board to be able to tell them we can use a couple spots. Well, again, spots. In, all along the road, you know, obviously you're not going to put snow. You have tons of plantings, slow plantings all along Route 138. Right. You're not going to dump snow on top of all those plantings. Plus, right. obviously you're not going to dump it being that close to 138. So, um, you know, you do have area in the rear. I know you have a s drainage area. Um, but that's why I say, you know, not to put additional trees out there. I would rather see you having being able to drive around the building. And I'm not sure that the fire chief, the fire chief always likes to have an access all the way around all buildings. So I'm not sure what his... Three sides anyway. So I'm not sure uh, what his comments. Okay. Yeah. So I know he likes to have uh, you know to be able to go around the building. Do you want us to email the plans to fire? I'll take care of that myself. Okay. So. Do we have copies? Do we have copies of the plan? Yeah. So if you are required to have some type of egress, then you might have you know a, a graveled. Yeah, on this side. Graveled area to drive back and dump snow. Sure. Uh, I keep, you know, I don't want to say that will work. Again, you know, that's going to be not rain him and we'll we'll do our homework on it. See we'll what get, it, see it. what comes up, but we're not going to stop you. Sure. We work with the other departments and we you know try to make things work. That's helpful. Brick had some additional questions for you. What is to the south of this? Directly to the south. Um, directly to the south is this gentleman. This gentleman right here. Right? You're directly to the south. Could you, yeah, state, right could you state your name for the record? Uh, uh, William St. Martin. I own quality auto in Rainham, 138. Okay. I've been here 46 years, so. So you're yeah. here every morning. Your building is, doesn't have a roof on it, right? Yeah. So when it caught fire back 
while back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got the nice There's cars out front. Uh -huh. Got the nice cars out front. The Lincolns? Oh, no, no, the old bullies. Uh, yeah. The uh, Jeep bullies. Uh, don't worry, they blow the guy down the road. Okay. He's going to be getting out of the shop a little bit. So, is that is so I'm wondering to what's the approximate distance in the road opening from where you're going to be and where the next uh, parcel is? I think his entrance is further south. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. It looks to be about 50 feet. I think you have, you have kind of a wide open curb cut there, yeah. right? There's a wide open curb. Much, uh, I had a little rim up front and stake up there. Yeah. Right? That's on state property. Yeah. And I have actually two openings. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I have two, so they can go over the side. Yeah, I can go right around. Yeah, right right right. Let's see, one on either side of the sign, right? Yeah. 50 feet. And also, for your information, sidewalks are on the other side of the street. Yeah. You know, not on our side. <coughs> And the fire hydrant's right in front of Dark Rock Hands. So Across the street. <laughs> and what's just to the north? Uh, to the north is Edmund. Wait a minute. Oh, oh he lives. lives. Yeah. yeah. There's a vacant lot directly oh, to our gosh. north that has an Atlantic retail sign out in front. Is that the car wash? Cow wash. Cow wash? Cow, yeah. He owns a car wash. He owns that empty wow. land. I think it's. You have 14 acres of land in it, and car wash, and then you have the Eamons in between that. Eamons entrance is right at the, mm -hmm. almost at the set of lights there. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and, lights, and yeah. how far will your entrance be from the light? Oh, it's a, it's a good distance. It's... That's, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it is. It's about roughly 500 feet from the oh, light. Oh, that far? Okay. I would, I would have guessed a little more than that. Okay. I've measured it. That's all I know. Okay. I'll go with his answer. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, measured it. Okay. Those are all my questions. I just have two items yep. just to mention, and not necessarily questions. On, on the point here of, of uh, utilities from 138, yep. you, you may find that you can't get into 138. That was just redone when they did the Walmart. What, am I correct? What's that? Didn't they resurface 138 when they did yeah. the Walmart in front yeah, of right in front down, of you? Right down past me. It's ready to stop. So it's in front of the yeah, CSO. You may not be able to get into there if you have to. We're, we're hoping that everything is fine for reuse. I hope so too. I mean, if, if, if something pops up, typically they'll let us do a curb to curb overlay or something. You've already, you, you already have a building that has bathrooms, yeah. running yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I'm wanted to make that. You'd have to find something, you know, not broken where yeah. Yeah. we're not expecting Your power, it. You're prob they're probably going to run power underground to a pole. Sure. Sure. And so the, other, be, yeah. the other item, if I may, is my pet peeve, okay? Oh. I spent a lot of time driving around in town, and I am so tired of seeing large trucks just parking on the highway, on state highways, while they run in to see if they can get in there, and does someone have to move, or they want to go grab a sandwich somewhere? Please, make sure your trucks don't park out front on Route 138 while they're waiting to get into the parking lot. It just messes things up and makes a dangerous situation for everybody. So the, the good news here, again, is that O'Reilly Auto Parts owns their own vehicles, and typically they're, they'll perform the deliveries after business hours. So those spaces are cleared out. They can just zip right in there. They'll pull in, head first here, and then just back right up to that door, and they have a key to the facility. They're, you know, they're... Because in general, we have a problem out on 44 with the car lots. Right. They pull up those those, those delivery trucks sure, and just pop them the right there. Yeah. And people trying to come out of the driveway. I have a pitch. I have a pitch up. The we've 44 has been Brick's issue for a long time, and um, he heads that direction at five o'clock in the morning. I think that's why he knows, Mr. Mastria went as far as putting signs up no loading uh, no loading or unloading uh, area <laughs> I have a picture of a truck parked in front of that sign yep. for Chevy mastery is here at the GMC and there's a Big trail truck park. I took a picture yeah. to send it to you, and then I think I forgot. The worst <laughs> one I crazy. see is, is, is parking in the, that, that graveled area in front of Wendy's. 
And if you're trying to come out of that Wendy's parking yeah, lot, you have no school. visibility at all for oncoming traffic. None whatsoever. Do you have any uh, questions, sir? It's just yeah, like well, that. I don't know if they're going to close it in with a fence or are going to leave it open? Or? Uh, we weren't showing a fence now, but it'll, be, it'll look well, a lot not better. Not much fence, we, Yeah, we, we're, we're not showing a new fence now, yeah. but you know, that may change. This is the problem I got for 46 years there. Danny was there for 30, 31, right? I, people go to his business looking at cars, and they park in my yard to go over there because he didn't have enough parking. Yeah. And, and this went on and on. And they'd be going for an hour, two hours, try out a car, go show the friends, you know. Yeah. And messed me off when I was, you know, in operation. You know, right now it wouldn't matter. So, but you know right. that happens all the time. Yeah. Well, and, and I know the auto business I've been around long enough in the auto, on the automobile business. I just down the street, uh, the pot store down the street, all day long you get cars in and out. Of so you guys going to be much bigger. So I can imagine how many more cars you're going to have in and out. Of yeah, I think we're. Um, Talking about advanced, yeah. I guess we're about a similar size facility. I hope. I hope. <laughs> that that building, that building up that got to be twice or three times the size it is. They typically are around the same size. Foot well, foot. even even with that set, there's 35, 30, 37, 37 pocket spaces. Yeah. Uh, I think this type of business compared to the car lot that was there before, yeah. the car lot that was there before, I've driven in there and unless in the unless I drove all the way in the back gravel area to park yeah. you weren't parking out front because yeah. it was just a mess he was yeah. using it for inventory this isn't to gonna be cars, this right? isn't gonna be like that I'm not against the business right I'm just, no I'm just saying no issues that yeah I had yeah you don't have to all these years that's all I'm not against these guys yeah you know yeah no I'm just saying I, I don't think that people are gonna be parking in, in yeah. your yard to walk across to go to the pot store that yeah. they're gonna be over there that's to my advantage with them being it right I can do something with my property anyway right you know? now you said that there's an existing fence yeah it's a thing put it up it's, yeah. Are you going to be so cleaning or are you going to be removing the, the fence? I don't know that we had it called out on the plans right now. Why um, don't you check on that? Because we don't want it. We don't. If if it's a if it's an old fence that's sitting there, doesn't it's so not doing right anything. Line, you probably didn't know whose it was, and we might have just said, "Yeah, you know, want to leave it." So if you're, if you're that fact is right on the line. We I would love you know, and I think you know the towns, the board. We would love to. Our goal is to have 138 nice, clean organized looking uh, so don't leave things if there's something that's there you know, find out if you own it and if you, you don't want it to look right exactly so, so, so figure that out so you can put on the plan fence to be removed yep. we just figured it out there you go. <laughs> excellent so you can make that note then on the plan yeah okay anything else sir no, no, that's about it. Okay. Great. Members, any questions? That's it. Bob, welcome to Rainham. Great. Great, thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Now, we would love to hear, you're getting paid, so what's your, <laughs> what is your uh, pitch that you have? Wow. Well, you guys kind of rushed through it. I feel like I don't have much of a pitch anymore. No, we're, we're not rushing through it. I just, I like doing things in order, so. So. The basic building, it will be a block building. Now, could you do me a favor and put your plan up there the so people at home, Wayne will zoom right in so we can see what O'Reilly Auto Parts is going to look like. All right. All right. So the building will be a uh, split block. It is painted in the two colors, in the two tan colors that you see. And then around the storefront, we have an ephus in the red with about, it's 38 foot, 8 inches of storefront glass. And we have some nice plantings in the front. Okay, very nice. I think it's, uh, the colors fit with everything that Brainham likes. Okay. Is that your standard your Absolutely. for all your stores? Mm -hmm. Away from the orange, right? The red and the yeah. green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
uh, O'Reilly's has two levels. Typically, they want to go into a town and put a metal building, pre-engineered metal building. A lot of towns around here don't allow that, so we take it up a notch and we put in the, the split block. Now, instead. for your sign, for your standard sign that you put on all your properties, does that sign fit into the Rainham bylaw? It's over 15 feet long. It needs a special permit for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Good point, though, too. We haven't seen any kind of a marquee sign. Do you have a plan for that? So they, the O'Reilly's has a sign department that will pursue approvals for for all their, their building and their freestanding signs. We show general locations of where they're going to put them, and then they'll take it to the next level. Because I know, I, I know that uh, the gas station, the convenience store on 44, um, the newest one where season Michelle seasons yeah. yeah seasons and I know they had issues that their signs you know they wanted it bigger every sign that's over 15 feet long needs to go to the zoning board of appeals program. and they got denied um, they were denied uh, and then they reduced the size yeah, the first time around the first mm -hmm. time they first the right. second time around they reduced the size we have a lot of signs in town that are 22 21 19 and they all go to the zoning board for approval before they get a building permit. Now, I know our last uh, zoning enforcement officer was really a stickler about signs for some reason. And I remember that bylaw getting put in. Is there, uh, what's your opinion on the signs? Are our signs too small or is our? Well, it depends on the facility. You have a lot of buildings like in Paramount Drive area, there are a lot of buildings and a 15-foot sign just doesn't do any justice to you, you know, a larger sign for people to see. So. Um, I mean, I think what we have in place now works. It's just that anything that's they just have to larger go. needs to be reviewed. And um, well, I think it's how close the signs are to each other as you go down the street, and, well, and, and getting cars in and out in between them. We, the bylaw addresses that: how close the street, how far up the sign can be off the road, so people can see underneath the signs. So I think we have a pretty good sign bylaw in place. Right. Okay, so your sign department is going to take care of that. What else? Uh, what else do you want to know about it? We have... What colors the chairs inside? Your chairs? Your <laughs> no chairs. No. <laughs> free coffee? No. No uh, I, free I coffee. I have one. What's the anticipated, you know, assuming you get approved here and so forth, what's the timeline? Uh, they, they typically, you know, go as soon as they can get everything teed up from the contractors. Are you talking this year? Uh, it depends on how quickly we can get the remaining permits. They try to, you know, s not have construction spill into winter. We, I myself, wait for Josh to get through zoning and planning, and then as soon as we have that, either the 30-day appeal or once everything's set, we race to get the permit as fast as we can. O'Reilly's then bids it out. It can take up to six months for them to bid it out sometimes. So it might be spring and next year. Yeah, it might be next year. Okay, just curious. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have any other questions, Bob. I do have a couple. The um, HVAC equipment, is that situated on the roof? Yes. So there's a parapet wall that hides that. In front of that building is a parapet wall? Yes. How tall is the building? The building at the tallest is 19 feet. This is 17 feet, 17.4. And you said you don't have a rendering of the sign or the sign location? I have, I have on the building? I have on the Not the one on the building, but the one on the... the I have just the sign location. I don't have okay. the actual... As long as the board's okay with the location. And it, it is 15 feet. You're allowed 23 feet on, on the, on, on the uh, pole sign, so... Okay. Where is your location? It's, is it on the plan? Yeah, right next to the driveway. How far off the, off the front of the building set that point? Nine and a half feet from the property line? The edge of the side? And you said it's right next to the driveway? Yeah, to the left, because you're looking at the store just to the left. It's not going to It's not gonna impair any, uh, right oh, it's on that little island there? Okay. Yeah. All right. It'll be a pole, so it won't interfere with sight distance. Yep. 
Okay, so uh, I don't have anything else. Bob, did you have any other questions? Sir, you all set? No, I'm all set. Great. Then I suggest we continue this until our next meeting, which is May 18th. So the, the only homework that I think I'm walking away with is write a response letter to memorialize and work on the snow storage with the various other cases. Snow storage. Uh, Bob is going to check with the fire department about right, right. because you know that could change your parking lot. Uh, you might, I know, on the north side you had showed a couple of trees, so you might those be might, get pushed back. You might be relocating else. those trees right. to do some type of a uh, H20 load gravel, you know, rough grade, whatever, yeah. just for fire truck access. Um, which might work out to your advantage because that might be your snow storage on that side, you know, going in the back. So, because uh, you're really limited, where else you, you know, you're parking on the south side, that's where your loading dock is. And yeah. um, now, the one thing I didn't see, do you have a dumpster location? Yeah, that's that back right hand corner. Okay, that's what's in the, that's what's, now is that uh, fenced in? Yes. Okay, so that's right. down, yeah. Right there. So, you know, you already have that there. You, you, you're pretty, you're, yeah, you're yeah. pretty limited on where, you know, where you can access around the building. I'm sure the fire chief's going to want to be able to get to the north side of that, to that building. So, so, I, yeah, we'll so I think you're going to need to move those two trees, which, again, is going to uh, provide a, 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 an alleyway or a driveway to get back to dump snow. But let's see what the North Rainham Water and Conservation, you know, what they decide to do. Yep. And if, if fire is comfortable with the access that we're providing. And we've done this layout in a ton of municipalities, yep. almost identical, that L shape of parking, you know, it's. And again, I'm not going to, I won't be going there to fight the fire. So if they're happy yep. and the chief says, you know, it's, he doesn't have a problem with it, especially it's not a pitch, pitched roof. Yep. It's a flat roof, uh, well, we 20, might, we 20 might feet tall. <laughs> You know the size of equipment that he has to bring there is not going to be a ladder truck so right. you know it may be different but we might still look at it for snow storage it's a yeah. question that yeah. uh, needs to be answered yeah. all right so we'll continue this public meeting until may 18th and we'll put you on for six let's see we have uh, public hearings on new state highway site plan oh is that is that the hotel Bob, what is that? 748 770 New State Highway. Uh, no. Um, it's the gas station service yeah, station. Sorry, that's the oh, on the top of the hill. Bradford, no, Bradford. RV. Mm -hmm. We're going to put you on 615. Great. For May 18th. I may be traveling. You might have Randy Meyer, my uh, associate. Well, we'll be sure to give him a hard time. Good. But I'll, I'll be sure to download with him and give him the full, the full update. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Very good. Thank you. You got that, Maureen? 615? Uh, I got it. All right. Let's see. We have that one. Uh, excuse me. Before you, before you go, did you receive... Uh, Letter from the sewer, de sewer department? 30 seconds ago. Okay, so you do have that letter? No. All right, so you see the sewer connection fee for the commercial building is 10000 per dry acre, blah, blah, blah. So you have all that. Yeah. All right. Okay, Burke, any, uh, we already did invoices. Any minutes that we have? No minutes. No minutes. Correspondence besides the... One that I just said, public hearing notice. Uh, we already did that one. Planning board coordinator update. I would like to add, just say one thing that uh, Bob is now, uh, uh, we were on a six month trial period for planning coordinator, this new position, planning coordinator. 
and I had given the selectmen a 100 uh, percent that is working great for this board. It's working great for me. I've had a work with the three, four town planners over the last 15 years I've been here, and it hasn't been uh, that easy. Bob is in the business, he knows terminology, he's not reinventing the wheel, and uh, he knows what to ask. He calls me up, you know, a couple times a week, we discuss a few things, and uh, I think it's working out great, so I... Do you agree? Do you think it's working out great? It's nice to be off probation, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's been a pretty easy transition. I've been the chairman of a planning board myself, so... And I, have a good comfort level as to where you guys, how you guys operate. So, so far, so good. So, his six months uh, trial is over. I believe, I believe Excuse me. This week. So he's selectman agreed to continue, and uh, so it's official. So, with that said, Bob, floor is yours. A lot of the things I was going to discuss, we just discussed with these last two public hearings. And I saw, I saw Buzz was here earlier. Is, is, was he here for any reason? For the certificate of action. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to chase down the state to try to get an idea when they were going to do the lights on Broadway and Center Street. So when I reported to you last fall that they told me they were going to do it early spring, right now no one knows anything about the project or where it falls in their schedule. So. Um, I don't know if we got lost in the shuffle, but uh, both uh, Ed Buckley and I have been trying to contact them to try to find someone who knows anything about it. Because um, like, like, I said, like I reported to you in the fall, we were told it was going to be done in the spring. And it's springtime. Pretty soon it's going to be summertime. Yeah. Everyone wants to know what's going on. This is crazy. Time. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> well, if you recall, when it started out, it was delayed because we hadn't taken the land yet. We did that, and then it sat for three months because they said they were waiting for the land to be taken, and we'd already done it, and they, it's just been an hour or so. The Bass and Old Katy uh, Road name we took care of. Um, you asked me about a site visit that Dan and I were going to do together, yeah. and I forgot for some reason that day. That was uh, Berry Hill. Did you do it? No, no we haven't. We're going to probably do it at the beginning of the week. All right. Um, if I they're, they're raising structures there, and they're getting ready. Uh, so maybe we can do a... Do you, uh, you, have, you have John's number? I do. Yeah. So maybe if it works for one of you gentlemen, or both of you gentlemen, two, Monday and Tuesday, we can we can try to do that. Tuesday's uh, always a good day. Or anyone else who wants to come if you're yeah. around. Um, I do have... Uh, I did have um, Mr. Frank Gallagher come to my office um, with a plan for Sandy Hill. He wanted to know how they could approach uh, trying to get two lots developed there. And I talked to Dan a little bit about... Uh, the meeting today. Um, if you want to look at the plan, I have the plan with me. If you want to wait till the next meeting, we can do that also. Well, like I told Bob, Sandy Hill is uh, another one of those. Where, where is it? First undevel uh, South Street East, okay. almost to the East Taunton line. Okay. Where the old Mayfair is, was, yep. those new houses, well, right across the street. Sandy Hill runs down, runs, turns, goes out in the woods, and nobody even knows what Sandy Hill looks like because it starts getting narrow, narrow, narrow. But there's houses that have been built. <coughs> Sandy Hill has a paper street that connects over to the one that we approved as a, uh, they did all the improvements, did a little cul-de-sac off of Williams Ave. Charles Street. Charles Street. And that paper street's called Pine. Yeah, so, uh, I asked Bob how far the blacktop ended, but there's still two houses, two newer houses that got built on the dirt section. Uh, so I'm not sure, I would advise, now that you know what Sandy Hill is, take a ride. I would advise uh, everybody to take a ride because there, there's this five acres, and I had, had looked up when we were doing the other one just to see, because the applicant and his attorney was saying that, oh, 
uh, there's not going to be any more than you know maybe five houses on that and because it's all wetlands and I looked it up on the plans and there's an awful lot of open land down there a lot, there's a lot of conservation land there too so is I'm there? not sure how it works yeah so, so what, is, what is Frank looking to do what he has to go he has, he has a, a gentleman who owns a property he'd like to develop two lots on the property that he bought but the property uh, is only accessed by a very uh, unimproved dirt path and uh, we need some major improvements to get to his land where his land starts and then you'll have to do some kind of a subdivision plan from there and, and Sandy Hill itself just coming in off of South Street is pretty narrow and I remember going in there a few years ago when something was before us and I had to back out I, I couldn't turn my car yeah, around yeah when you get to a certain point down Sandy Hill you almost feel like you're you're in somebody's yard yeah I mean, exactly it's like, it's like houses are really kind of, close together it's, it's like and, and there's no place to turn around it's actually, yeah. it's actually um, a way to <laughs> make a big loop and come back out but it's very narrow you're up against houses <laughs> that are right on top of the roadway mm. uh, so I, I think we're just gonna I'm just gonna ask them to you know come forward to the planning board with a two lot subdivision and we can decide how to make the improvements to get to the subdivision when you see the plan. Yeah, so it's not a town road, you said. It's, right. it's a, apparently, according to Mr. Buckley, uh, the highway superintendent, it is a town road, or the town maintains the road to a certain point. The asphalt stops and then it becomes a dirt path. And you have to traverse this dirt path probably several hundred feet before you get to the uh, the land, uh, the land in question. See, now I know in the year, years past, there's been a couple of different people that came in front of us. And the people that live on Sandy Hill, and I believe it's the, probably some of the newer houses, didn't want it upgraded. I think they were opposed to uh, making it like a... Keep traffic in the Well, to keep yeah, people out of there. Like uh, so... You know, it's it's uh, it's a it's a tough it's a tough uh, tough spot, tough decisions. I guess Bob mentioned earlier about Pine Street, like what we just did on Pine Street. You know, is that something you know we're going to wind up doing? Uh, you know, we had Nick Harrison tonight. We made him take. It's almost a similar type thing. It's it was dirt. We made him go all the way to you know the end of his property. Um, it's what we generally do, Taylor Road. You know, we have a lot of these around. Yeah. And uh, this Pine Street, does it tie in in any way to other Pine Streets in Rainham? Or is it just an extra street with the same name? Some, 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 someday yeah, someday yeah, people will be unhappy and want the name changed. Yeah, the 911 system won't take that, I guess. Um, it is called Pine Street. So you have a pine street oh, wow. on the opposite side of town. It, obviously, it's not constructed, but it's on a it's on a plan. <clears throat> See, and that's the, that's the section that I was. Uh, so, so this is coming in Sandy Hills. The pavement stops way back here. Then you traverse this gravel uh, road, and then I believe this property has got a gate here. So they'd have to make the improvements on this road, and then do some kind of a subdivision plan, probably similar to what you just approved on Tomlin Estates to get to these two lots. Cabral, he has, he's one of the newer houses. I think they're, I think there's houses maybe here and here, and I think they're fairly nice houses. Yeah. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not little shacks that were built a hundred years ago or anything. No, those are before. Mm, yeah. So I think we'll just handle it that way then. Yeah. Now what's, uh, we don't know what's beyond here. Is this, what is that? It's the, uh, temple. Temple. Yes, the temples. Temples up here. It comes all the way down this way. They were in parcel here and parcel here. Oh, so, oh, so, where, that's, where's so this is where's it. South so Street. I'm thinking South, South Street's Street over here. here. Yeah, so. But the, is over so there. Well, here. South Street comes like this, so the temple. 
Well, don't forget, it comes around. So the temple oh, all okay. the way to the yeah. river. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. It goes all the way past here, yeah, to the river. So this, so this is a dead end then. So this, this can't go any further than this. No, only well, if the temple decides to with with the property owner here, and they do something on this parcel. But mm. <clears throat> so this is the section that is on the is on. You got, oh, you got Raymond App. That's the one I was talking about. Raymond App. We had this extension here, mm. not Williams App. Raymond App. And then Sandy Hill comes in, and then this, so this connection here has got to be over in here somewhere. So Raymond, uh, Keith, uh, Keith is a developer of the extension of Raymond Yeah, that's the land. But it's not shown in this plan, but there is a big swath of wetlands in here. Yeah, so it's, you know, uh, it's at this point, this is almost the end of it. I don't yes. think uh, yeah. the Buddhas, I, I thought that everything in the back was wetlands that they gave to the uh, river of wildlife or whatever. Well, I think there's two parcels. There's a parcel here, and then the parcel that the temple is on is adjacent to this parcel. Okay. They own a, I think on this parcel there's a, a vacant single family home up on the road. Yeah, didn't so they buy a house after the fact oh, or something oh, like that? Holy cow. Well, they, okay, they were, the before the temple got built, they were in that single family house. No, right? they, bought no. The, they bought the next they bought two. One. Yeah. They or bought, two. They bought the yellow one, and then they bought oh. the old farmhouse. Oh, okay. Which and those are very deep lots. They wow. went all the way down. Okay. So. Well, they look that way. Yeah, because that's as far as they're going to go, I guess. Uh, still, if you want to take a ride down, I, I Yeah. Know. I can give them some direction. Thank you. All right. Anything else? It's all good. Servants? You're going to look into those, uh, like I said, maybe it's not an issue. The two lots that the car lot is using for storage now. The, the car lot that's uh, in the general area where we were just talking about, uh, I assume it's him who's parking cars in the old uh, car wash area. I handle that, not an issue. Not an issue? Okay. Beginning of next week. And, and, and taking care of me, he's taking them out of there, or he's just moving the cars off the old um, car wash, car wash property, and the other house. house property. The other house is his house. He showed me that he has registered vehicles to his name, and I think that that's unregistered to be moved back to, to the to lot. So he he must have bought it. That that house was for sale a while back. He lives there. The owner of the car dealership lives yeah. there now. Okay. Surfed, uh pretty calm a separate meeting uh, this month uh, the subject of the rail okay. the subject of the rail came up again and I guess there was another big meeting and Stoughton stood up uh, even though they've changed it now and it's going to be the middle of route Stoughton got up on the table on the table I don't care who says it whether it's state or whatever you're not putting a train to my to our downtown area end of story so it could be a battle they could succeed, secede from the state. I don't know what might happen if they have a plan to do that. That was a, that was a big deal for, for them. Uh, what else did we talk about? The annual meeting's coming up. I should be getting uh, the letter of invitation if anybody wants to, to attend. It's a, it's a dinner meeting at LeBaron Hills Country Club in Lakeville. I don't know if you got, did you ever go to that, uh, Brett? The annual meeting? Um, I went to one or two of them. The uh, Lieutenant Governor will be the speaker that night. If anybody's interested in going, when I get I think the information. The whole should go. I, I think it's great. I, yeah, have a nice meal. Yeah, because we have to pay for the meal. It's oh. not free. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, it is not free. And well, uh, if, we have to, if the town has to pay for us to go, then they're going to send us to somewhere <laughs> we want to go. Nuts. <laughs> uh, I attended a meeting at Serpent today. Uh, I was put on the uh, nomination committee for the new offices of Serpent. So you gentlemen may be getting a letter in the mail. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> there was a slate. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention is, uh, as, as you know, I'm, I'm on the uh, the board at the Council on Aging, and uh, I'm the re representative from that board to the RAVE organization. And I attended a meeting there on uh, Monday Monday evening. Our superintendent is <laughs> is up to here with students. You know, the the, the rate of growth in, in both Raynham and in, in Bridgewater is. Uh, 
out of control. They're looking. He's been dealing with the state now for uh, for funding for a school in Bridgewater. Uh, we hit your department. Uh, Bob gave him a list of uh, building permits that had been issued, uh, and I I had another piece that uh, Maureen had given to another 91 units that what was that Riverview Meadows Riverview Meadows and so forth. He's concerned that, and rightfully so, uh, the growth and. He's, he's more than willing to come and talk to us about it, what it means to the, to the school system and so forth. Uh, it's my own opinion on it here. I know we're not at the 40B level yet. It keeps, it's, a, it's a moving target all the time. But when we do get to that level, do we want to think about restricting the number of building permits per, per year? Or do, to, 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 to manage the growth. You know, this Bradford RV, this Innovation Park, those are great things. They add to the tax base, but they don't add to the to the school system. Can I make a yeah, go ahead. comment? Sure. Um, I wasn't here a long time ago when the town did try to do that. They tried to put a cap on building permits, um, and they had a sunset date for that because that I think right. ended in like 04, 05. Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. Is, still in zoning bylaws. Still can read it. It hasn't been taken out. <clears throat> Every town struggles with this. Okay, um, it's not just Rainham. It's no, I, it's I, not unique to Rainham. And everyone talks about it when the economy is good and they see a lot of activity. Personally, I think the economy takes care of itself. Uh, you know, when it slows down and people can't borrow money, you're not going to see a lot of housing going up. You're not going to see a lot of apartment buildings. So to restrict building permits, it's kind of a slippery slope. I don't know it's just a good thing well, to try to get involved in because it's too, there's too many things that can go wrong. Well, my opinion on it, I think that's the least of the problem. What's that, the school system? No. It, yeah, having residential housing uh, affecting the school system, I think it's when you have the state is, when you can have an applicant go in and say, I'm going to do a 40B. Bridgewater did 260 units, 265 units. You're talking on the 104? On 104. Yeah. But that's affected Rainham and Taunton because it's our, you know, we share the school system. And they're going to be going up in those buildings to add units. Well, uh, now I heard that they're going, they're thinking of going for another 300 units. Yeah, but up, not other buildings, up. From the up? Top. That's, that's what uh, Derek told me the other night, well, that they're building up. I don't know if they're possible. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. Yeah, I don't I don't like think they're going to be able to do that. As high as they can go with the wood frame structure. Yeah, and I think if they're going in the back with another 300 units that they're going to be proposing. So, 300 units, the what needs to be uh, allocated for uh, the moderate income that will qualify, uh, to me, is. So small. Out of 265 units, what is it? 20%? Not even 20%. Is it 10% for 40? What has to qualify to make that project 40 big? Yeah, 10%. 10%. 10%. So, 20, so 26 units. Okay, so 26 units. Out of. I, I, I'm, not following, I'm not following your point. What, what, what does it matter if they're 40B or non 40B? They still add to the school population. They do. But the permitting process. The permitting process just is flies through. There's no the town Rainham. If we have a forty, a forty B project that comes in, and we're not at our ten percent, I understand. You can get two hundred units. I, I understand that. But I, what my suggestion was is once we reach the ten percent, and we do have some control over it. And I'm not saying to stop. Hey, I, progress is great. I'm just saying that we might want to look at doing it in a more controlled manner. Because right now it's wide open. Well, I don't think, but residential building permits uh, is how many how many residential building permits have we have we given out? We did uh, thirty single families last year, but you know, but we're up over fifty. If I remember your letter, we'd already done fifty so far this year. I don't remember. Yeah, but if, the numbers, but if you go back a couple of years. You're going to have years where they're going to It fluctuates. You have years yeah, well, I'm sure. You know, the teens, right. and you've had years where it's, you know, you know, over 35, 40. But take Bass and Old. You know, you guys are sticking up to 20, 20 a year. Those are the ways you, you control it. You just can't, across the board, tell, you know, people, landowners, they can't develop their well, land. I, I think my memory was back when we didn't have that control, 
and it was sunset and all of that. Um, as soon as we voted on it, everyone came in. Everybody was grabbing permits the next day. And again, when we did it, it was per, it, it was per builder. It was uh, seven. I think it was seven permits, and it was individual people. Oh, I didn't know how it worked. I think it was yeah, individual. Yeah, it was individual like people. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have. So five you could have these people's grandmothers coming in. You could have five different builders apply for. Up to, I think it was up to seven or eight permits yeah. for the year or something. Was the huh. is pushing this, or is it the state? No, 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 ne neither one. Uh, no, this is just something just that came to the superintendent of schools. He and I were talking, because mm. they, they have a real issue with, with space. You know, as I said, right now, the immediate need is in uh, Bridgewater. They need to build a school, because they have the school where the uh, roof collapsed, I don't know, two years ago now, I think it is. And they've got the kids from that, I think it was a middle school and that, or an elementary, and they get those kids over in the high school. And the high school, you know, it's kind of crowded cafeteria-wise because they got little kids and, the, and the, the high school kids. But the same thing is happening in Rainham, you know, in terms of uh, the, num the number of uh, families, new families over there. I think you told me that, uh, Russ, that uh, Rainham is one of the hottest uh, spots in the country for real estate right now, or at least in the state. I, we I talked, we, we that talked about that. I'm it, sure it, they'll, when Bassett and gets going, I'm, yeah. I'm sure they'll go right through that. Anyway. The, for whatever it's yeah. worth, those, those are my thoughts on it. You all each have your no, own opinion yeah. and so forth. I just don't. I I I know that the school system has. My two kids went to school, and my daughter's twenty eight, and I remember when she was in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, all the teachers were complaining about the oversized yeah. classrooms this back then, and. You know, it's 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 always been an issue, and when things start slowing down, you know, like Bob said, then you know, the state sends. We received notifications uh, that even the state was asking towns to lighten up on uh, some of the rules and regs to speed up permitting process to get things moving mm -hmm. again. Remember, Maureen, mm -hmm. I do. when that came through, yep. you know, here they are saying, "Hey, don't be so restrictive. Let's." Twice. Right. That's right. So, <coughs> and then they held that lady up on Mill Street for seven years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. Uh, All right. It's it, it, just information for whatever it's worth. That is something to keep in mind, though. Like Bob said, when we do the larger subdivisions, we did it with Bassett. No, we we told them they could only do twenty a year, and we've always had that in mind about, you know, back in back in the early day about having restrictions. Um, the, 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 um, of the understanding from talking to him that class sizes are going to increase oh, in Rain this year. They're they got They're not filling, <coughs> I, think uh, I forget the number now, but they're, they're not filling some, some positions, people retiring and so forth. That's how they're, they, he's eliminating the need to lay people off, teachers off and so forth. Now the class other sizes will go up. Yeah. I have one more item yep. unrelated to that. It's from the Serpent meeting. Is eighteen million dollars of federal funding that the state has, or our region has, if you would, for, for the TIP program, transportation improvement program, and, and SIPR is just not getting the just not getting the requests for the for, for projects for that kind of money. I talked with Ed about it earlier this week. So, you know, if we don't get it somewhere else in the state, it's going to go, and certainly we must have the need for some uh, transportation improvement projects in the area. But nobody seems to be requesting. Well, I'll, well, I'll give you a perfect one. And I just sat with the guy this afternoon, Middleborough Rotary, and they just blew him away. They just took him off. They they're trying desperately to get back out on that project, but the, the state just just threw it out and completely ignored it. Well, I just saw Wayne jump off his chair. Wayne, our cameraman, because who, when you said Middleborough Rotary, he's oh, yeah. all for it. So oh, put really? in that request. <laughs> But uh, you know, I talked to Ed, and, and uh, it, you know, they have a separate meeting. Separate has a separate meeting every month, the, the, trans, the tip meeting, and uh, I guess he gets the minutes from that. But I told me you might want to go in and, uh, and uh, sit in on that and see what we can get here in Rainham, for whatever it's worth. Well, I think Ed is certainly the person to talk to. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot of money, and see and again the, the biggest thing is transportation I think with the way it's defined it's going to be a lot of state roads that 
it, it gets into the state part, and it's not right. up to us. It's not up to an individual town to go after those I, grants. I understand I that, but how but much it's it's even roads versus public transportation. Well, know. it could be that as well. But Middleborough Road, for example, okay, you know, you that has an effect on us. You want to get well. the draft. You want to get the, the definition of. There must be something written yeah, down. Sure there is. Because if you're going to talk to Ed, I think just give it to Ed. Yeah. But if you have something I, in, it, that's I in writing. I feel like after every serpent meeting, I bring him whatever whatever information there is pertaining to that type of uh, stuff good. every year, every month. Very good. And that's all I have. I'll shut up now. Anything else? I have several things. Holy I'll, try to, I'll try to make them short. But holy moly, you should have elbowed me early and said, hey, I got a lot of things. Let's go. Take, take your time. We've already missed Jeopardy. Let's go. Um, we, I brought it up earlier, the parking in front. You know, how, how come we have it if we let them park in front every time? Flat roofs and A-frames. We don't want people to have flat roofs. I'm not in the building trade, but it seems everybody builds flat roofs for commercial buildings. And Again, what, why do we Brown upon it. Richard McCarthy. Um, <coughs> this is something I've brought up in the past. Parking space dimensions. You know, it, it, we have no numbers on how many you can have, and, and we I know we have a size. And I've said it before. Everybody's got these monster SUVs and um, pickup got, trucks, got, yeah. especially the ones with the the big axles and back with a couple. Of, I mean, they're off both sides of it. It's just I, if, if we're looking at things, I really think we need to have bigger parking spaces. Yeah. Well, if you're going to get into parking spaces, and someday we'll <laughs> we'll have uh, a sit down and discuss parking spaces, uh, I think we ought to look at our parking requirements. To me, are totally ridiculous when it comes to large square footage, WalMarts. Um, you have. Lowe's, you know, any any building with that large square footage, to me, the town is losing tax revenue, business tax revenue, revenue which is going to help the school systems. Exactly. It's not going to increase the school systems. You look, that's out in front of out in front of Walmart. There could be another uh, business in that parking lot that never gets used. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just and I, I gotta make a good. comment. You think, that, you think the parking lots are too big? I do. Okay. That? You think it's too not big? the spacing. I'm saying some of our parking lots that what our requirement is for a building square footage building. It should it should have uh, a limit or something up to a certain point. Be free of a couple of pad sites for other other buildings. Yeah. Well, to to that point though, Dan, and I, please don't take it the wrong way. We had a gentleman in here who wanted to put another building in the parking lot. Uh, the old. Uh, Kmart parking lot up front there, and, and we, we sent him away because we didn't he wouldn't put uh, little islands in the middle of the parking but lot. That's two different issues. Well, here we are. We're, 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 we told him we don't have a problem with him putting that up, but you have a racetrack over there. I, I agree we do. There's you, no question. And all we were asking for was for him to define his parking lot. If he wants to have a, an, an additional building out front, which thank you for bringing that up because that's another parking lot that is totally oversized and that's the problem yeah, you have that's, when that the, was my point that's the problem you have when the parking lots are that big it's just this if you don't have aisles if that we're talking about the old Kmart Plaza yeah if you drove in in a, a straight with an aisle in and out with a planting in the middle and then you veer off it would be so much better. Oh, absolutely. They cut across the, like, like you said, like they a racetrack. Cut across there yep. at 40 so, miles an hour. Yeah. 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 There's, there's no yeah. question yeah. about that. It's very controlled. Exactly. You go to this section, you turn it's, and it was this. Sure. 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 Yeah. And that's all we were saying. And it was discussion. It wasn't for anything else. No, but and you, he was discouraged. And, and I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll hear from him again. No, you will, because he's already called. They've already. Have they? Uh, it's good. Somebody has already called, and that was a uh, tenant. Uh, that was a prospective tenant and uh, which is not going there now they have somebody else who's interested in it well, good and the person uh, I forgot who even called me on it that 
he called me because of the issues that we were talking about. And I said, we're not asking for to go put plantings throughout the entire place. Define it. You yeah, have well to, if you're going to drop something in the middle of the parking lot, yeah. then all you have to do is define it. Have some, have some organization. So it's uh, a lot easier to get in and out. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough parking lot, but yeah, I'd love to see something else go because it's way too big for the for the population. So and and, and is there another state spaces, closing? I, I don't have a problem with increasing spaces. Well, I just have a I think tying into mm -hmm. this is kind of a big idea so, and yeah. where things are going in the future. But I was just reading about it. Um, as people do more and more home delivery, don't go out to right. malls. Mm -hmm. You don't need the parking lots there, but what you do need is on your residential streets and we're not quite to the point but when you get into you know say an older street in Taunton or especially in Boston they said they need to design the street where the UPS and FedEx trucks can pull over and and not be blocking the yeah. entire street because you got cars each way and then they sit out in the middle of the road with their lights flashing while they make all their deliveries yeah. and and that's where we need to do something about parking on residential streets or in business districts they have the same problem and less big parking lots on malls that aren't getting yeah. used with the million square foot amazon just did over there on far river we're going to need drone land yeah it's true and have you been into that complex the amazon complex i know i should have buy it just going down the highway just into the pipeline it, it's just enormous it's just unbelievable it's a city it's, it's that big it's yeah. blows you away what else you have there? Done. Bob? You're all set? Done. Very good. We're going to put that uh, parking discussion off until uh, a winter project. Okay. Only so we can have special meetings and all right. And real old fashioned discussions like we used to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look forward to it. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>